So welcome back uh, this time around. I actually got the vinyl headliner up in the boat. It was uh, interesting. Not quite as successful as I was hoping, but uh, that's real life. So hopefully you learn something from it just like I did. First thing I learned that it's not easy to get it up there. Well, it's easy to get it up there, but it's not easy to get it up there and, and do it well. The problem was that my material between the vinyl and the foam backing, it doesn't really stretch around corners and uh, when I've got a hull that curves one way and curves the other way at the same time and then you hit a bend it, it just the material wants to go flat it comes off a roll it's basically a flat material and I'm trying to putting it, put it on something that's anything but flat so it was it was a bit of a challenge um, anyway uh, as you'll see we'll get right into it you'll see in these video clips uh, where I just basically sprayed the ceiling, sprayed the foam, waited the three to four minutes and tried to apply it. Uh, it's a bit of a mess. You've got fumes everywhere. You've got strings of, of glue hanging down. It's not a fun job, but I'll just show you. Take a look at these clips. You'll see what I had to deal with. So in my previous videos, I showed how I had uh, removed all the old bits of foam from the ceiling and then I wiped down the entire inside of the ceiling with acetone to remove any residue to give it a clean surface for adhering the new headliner to. Uh, so the next step here was to spray this 3M adhesive all over the inside of the hull. Um, so I tried to do a crisscross pattern all over the inside of the hull and uh, try to cover all of that with adhesive and then the next step after that of course was to spray it onto the back of the new headliner and then as recommended I saw online as well as in the instructions on the can I waited a few minutes let it to um, kind of tack up or dry up on both surfaces and then I started lifting up the headliner into place and trying to press it on and so I I tried to follow along the center line of the hull and then work my way across. Um, because the stuff is kind of floppy and bending all over the place, I didn't really want to cut out the opening for the hatch until I kind of had it in place like that. And then I just kind of cut out the hatch so that the weight of the headliner was not pulling it down around the edges where it was glued on. So I did um, a section, kind of the flat part of the hull, or as flat as it gets, just to get the headliner positioned. And then I moved on like this to the next section, sprayed the inside of the hull once again, and then sprayed a coating of uh, the adhesive onto the back of the headliner. Once again, waited for a few minutes uh, for it to tack up, and then started pressing it into place. Um, now it's it's kind of tricky because it wants to stick um, as you go along and so you just have to kind of fight with it. Here you see I start on the second half of the hull again spraying the adhesive on the hull. I have the headliner the back side of it pointing up so some of it will grip onto that but that's okay because I'm going to be putting glue on there anyway. Uh, so I just try to put a even coating on there. I don't do the whole thing because I, I just realized that it's going to maybe take too long and I don't want it to stick where, I, where I'm not ready for it to stick. Once again, uh, carefully trying to position it, line it up with the seam of the, the old one so I don't leave too much of a gap and then start pressing it into place. And on this side I kind of learned from the previous one. So I tried to cut it to be a little closer to the right size um, I, because I realized that I can't bend it down the side of the hull like I had tried to do on the other side. That just wasn't going to work. Uh, there was going to have to be a seam there anyway, uh, kind of where the cap of the boat meets the, the hull of the boat along the edge. And once again just carefully trying to press it into place uh, it's really important to try to get all of the wrinkles out as you go 
you really can't go back and uh, pull it down and get it up again once it's been on there for more than a few seconds. So um, I kind of worked on the part that I had sprayed adhesive on, pressed it all into place once again, had to cut out around the hatch, and then also where it meets the wall for the head, I had to cut around that. Um, I kind of butchered that part because I didn't cut carefully enough because the weight of the vinyl was flopping down and I didn't guess correctly, but I guess I'll just have to use other pieces with sewed edges or something to cover my mistakes later. So I just continually tried to press it into place, tried to get it to fit. You do have some time to work on it once the, the adhesive tacks up. It's not like you have to get it up in seconds. But once you do stick it in place, it is, it is stuck. So this was the really fun part. I had to now go behind the, the vinyl into that enclosed space. Glad I was wearing a good mask because I first sprayed adhesive onto the, the rest of the hull of the boat where the vinyl was going to go and then sprayed adhesive all over the back of that and it was kind of like spider webs of glue hanging down into my hair and everything. It was, it was really a fun experience. And then I proceeded to just try to press it into place. But as you can see right here, uh, around these bends that are kind of going in multiple, multiple directions at the same time, it's, it's really almost impossible to avoid some creasing. Possibly if it was a warmer day, I could have maybe fought with the material and tried to stretch it around and make it fit a little bit better. But I guess that's, that's where experience really shows. But, uh, overall, I mean, I got it up there. There are a few wrinkles and everything, but it seems to be stuck really well. And, uh, you know, I learned from it. I think I would do things a little bit differently and spend a little more time with each section pressing it into place once I realized what the end result was like. But at that point, it's, it's too late to go back. So the material I used for the headliner is this vinyl material with a quarter inch, roughly quarter inch foam backing with like a thin material bonded to the back. It's intended for this type of use. The adhesive that I used is this 3M spray adhesive. It's uh, specifically a high temperature adhesive so that when the hull gets hot in the sun it doesn't let loose and the headliner doesn't fall on your head. It's important to use the right spray adhesive because if you use the wrong stuff there's 3M makes all kinds of spray adhesives but some of them are not high temperature and they will work to apply the thing but then when it gets hot and sunny I've heard stories of the, the stuff falling off so that's something you want to avoid. In the couple of videos that I saw online instructing how to install this stuff um, that spray adhesive is a, is a contact type adhesive so the idea is you spray it onto the material onto the surface you're applying it to, let it dry. It's important, uh, especially with this foam backed headliner, to let it dry enough time so that it's no longer a liquid in the foam because if you try to do it too early and then press it on, the pressure of applying it will force the adhesive into the foam instead of staying on the surface and then the foam doesn't stick as well or the material doesn't stick as well, and then the foam can get compressed and stay compressed because of the adhesive that's in it. So I tried to avoid doing that. I tried to wait the three to four minutes that they recommended. Um, maybe because it was cooler out here when I did it. I didn't think it was, but maybe it was a bit too cool. Maybe I should have waited a little bit longer. Maybe I should have waited for a warmer day. I don't know. Maybe that's why I have some of these depressions in the, fo in the vinyl, I don't know. Uh, the other thing is I wonder if I would have done it on a warmer day then maybe the vinyl would have been a little bit softer and a little more flexible and easier to make it conform to the corners. Then again maybe it would have stretched more and wrinkled more. I don't really know for sure. Um, it is what it is. The I do have a lot of these edges to finish up so like this one needs to be pushed up into place and then I've got some liquid contact adhesive that I'm going to do to press to hold them into place. Uh, I'm gonna, today it's a little bit cooler so I'm going to wait for a warmer day to do that and then I'm going to take some more of this vinyl and then try to fold the edges over like this and run them through the sewing machine 
to get a finished edge and then put those on as as kind of trim pieces to cover the cut seams. That's a theory anyway. Hopefully it works better than my my vinyl installation. Um. So then in my quest to try to reduce the amount of wrinkles I had seen some discussion online where people had used a heat gun to try to shrink the vinyl a little bit and reduce the amount of wrinkles. So I thought I'd give it a shot and figure what have I got to lose. So I, I pulled out the heat gun and and tried it at least on some of the wrinkles and uh, had some success. Um, obviously it, it can't get rid of all of them but I was just trying to reduce the amount of, of some of the wrinkles and uh, it did seem to work. So, um, a little more experimentation. What I discovered is that a heat gun really does work. It doesn't get rid of all the creases or the wrinkles, but it can certainly reduce them. Um, especially if it's just a small, kind of a little bit of a rounded in dimple, it's not very sharp crease. Uh, with the heat gun, you can certainly reduce those dramatically. Uh, any of the sharp creases, anything that were really creased really sharply, uh, that's a little bit harder to get rid of, but you can certainly reduce them, reduce the length of them a little bit because the ends are not creased as sharply. It is a very tricky procedure because like when I look at these spots up here now, uh, it's certainly better. Um, they're there. They're not quite as deep. So it worked. Um, it, it's a little bit tricky if you're going to use a heat gun. I don't think a hair dryer would do it. Well, it might, but it would take a lot longer. So like I'm using this Wagner paint stripper hair heat gun. Um, it, it gets stupidly hot and uh, <laughs> In fact, at one of the spots at the edge, I noticed I had smoke coming off the vinyl because I got it a bit too hot. So that's how hot it gets. You definitely don't want to be touching the vinyl once you've got it really hot because it is almost liquefying it. And so you got to be careful. It's a really fine line. Um, I found that before it really starts to shrink, you have to get the vinyl really hot. Uh, you don't want to melt it. So it's it's kind of a tricky thing. You got to keep the heat gun moving all the time. Never hold it in just one spot because you will melt a hole in your vinyl, and then that's worse than a wrinkle, obviously. So uh, you don't want that to happen. But uh, I think I will do a little bit more with the heat gun um, at some other time. But it seems to be working for reducing at least some of the worst wrinkles. So I'm happy with that. It's it's not going to be perfect, but. Any improvement is is a good thing. Um, there were a couple of wrinkles that uh, I had back in there that uh, you know they've. There was one here that's just a very small dimple now, and uh, it was quite a pronounced uh, wrinkle when I started. So I'm happy with that. There's a couple more down the side. I think they're right of just out of camera view. Uh, maybe not these two. That they're still visible, but um, not nearly as deep as they used to be another one right up in here um, so it's definitely looking better not perfect but better I guess it's a uh, learning experience for me and hopefully a learning experience for you guys if you're doing, putting this stuff up take it slow realize that you can't put it around too sharp of a corner that's also got a curve in it because it's just gonna wrinkle uh, plan it out really well as to how you're gonna do it and uh, if all doesn't go perfectly, I guess a heat gun can rescue from some rescue you from some of it. So I, I think I will leave it at that for this video. Um, I know I learned a lot from this. I hope you guys do too. Um, now I know why there's not a lot of how-to videos of how to do this because it's not easy, and uh, most people probably only try it once. But that's the way it goes. Uh, hopefully by the next time around I will have gotten some more of the wrinkles out and 
we'll get uh, some of the trim up and get be able to show you how it's looking once some of my mistakes are more well hidden. Anyway, if you guys liked what you saw, click the like button. If you want to make sure you don't miss the next one, whatever that is, subscribe and see you next time.